Hi, I'm Bob. When I started to introduce the oligopoly firm some days ago, I mentioned that if the firms collude, they act like a monopoly firm charge the monopoly price and share the monopoly profit. Then we discussed two models for the oligopoly firms when they choose quantities independently and interdependently. They are the Cornot model and the Stackelberg model. The difference between them is the timing of their actions. The firms choose the quantities of their output simultaneously in the Cornot model, while the firms choose their quantities of output sequentially in the Stackelberg model. Today, we will compare the collusive Cornot, Stackelberg, and competitive equilibria. We will examine the equilibrium prices and quantities for the oligopoly firms from different models, graphically and mathematically. Before we look at the graphs, I want to introduce the concept of residual demand. Residual demand is the market demand that is not met by other sellers at any given price. A firm sells only to people who have not already purchased the product from other sellers. For example, in the Cornot model, we assume that the market demand is P equals A minus Q, where the market output Q is the sum of the two firm's quantities. Form 1's residual demand is P equals A minus Q1 and Q2. So for any given the other firm's quantity Q2 star, from one's residual demand is P equals A minus Q2 star minus Q1. We see that from one's residual demand curve has the same slope as the market demand curve minus one, but it shifts to the left by the firm two's quantity Q2 star. However, in the Stackelberg model, the leader's residual demand curve looks different. We also use the same market demand setting, P equals A minus Q. And the market output Q is the sum of the leader's and the follower's quantities. We have learned from previous videos that the follower's best response function is Q2 equals 1 over 2 times A minus C minus Q1. The leader takes advantage of it and plugs in its residual demand function. The leader's residual demand function becomes P equals A over 2 times A plus C minus Q1. The leader's residual demand curve is flatter than the market demand curve with a slope of minus 1 over 2. After understanding the residual demand, we can graphically investigate the oligopoly firm's profit maximizing quantity and price in different model settings. We know that collusive oligopoly firms cooperate like one monopoly firm, so we analyze monopoly firm first. The demand a monopoly faces is the market demand, P equals A minus Q. It produces the upper level where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. The monopoly equilibrium quantity is QM and the monopoly equilibrium price is PM. Next, the oligopoly firms simultaneously choose their output quantities in the Cornot model. Form 1's residual demand curve is parallel to the market demand curve. It sets its output Q1 star, where its residual marginal revenue is equal to its marginal cost. The Cornot equilibrium price is PC. Third, the oligopoly firms sequentially choose their output quantities in the Stackelberg model. The leader firm faces its residual demand, 
and sets the output quantity so that the marginal revenue corresponding to the residual demand is equal to the marginal cost. The leader's Steckelberg equilibrium quantity is Q1 star, and the Steckelberg equilibrium price is Ps. If we place them together, we find that the monopoly equilibrium price is the highest among them. In other words, if the two oligopoly firms collude, the price they set is the highest. The Corlocked equilibrium price is the second highest, followed by the Steckelberg equilibrium price. All of them are higher than the competitive price, which is equal to the firm's marginal cost. We can derive the results mathematically. For two collusive oligopoly firms, they produce like a monopoly firm. The monopoly equilibrium output is 1 over 2 times A minus C. The monopoly equilibrium price is 1 over 2 times A plus C. Each collusive firm produces 1 over 4 times A minus C. For corlocked firms, we can derive each firm's output as 1 over 3 times A minus C. The market output is 2 over 3 times A minus C. The corlocked equilibrium price is 1 over 3 times A plus 2C. For Steckelberg firms, we can obtain the leader firm's output as 1 over 2 times A minus C. The follower's output is 1 over 4 times A minus C. The market output is 3 over 4 times A minus C. The Steckelberg market price is 1 over 4 times A plus 3C. I tabulate the results to compare collusive, Cornot, Steckelberg, and competitive equilibria. The assumption A is greater than C ensures that there is a solution and the quantities are positive. Under this condition, we find that the collusive market price is higher than the Cornot market price, which is higher than the Steckelberg market price, which is higher than the competitive market price. The market outputs are in the opposite direction. Competitive firms supply the highest output level, followed by the Steckelberg firms, which is larger than the Cornot quantity, which is larger than the collusive outcome. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.